We're going to take a look at some calculations regarding satellites orbiting Earth. First question here, multi-part question. The Hubble telescope has a mass of 1.16 by 10 to the 4 kilograms and is orbiting at an altitude of 610 kilometres above the surface of the Earth. At what speed is it travelling in order to maintain a stable orbit? We give us some details about the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth there. Uh, what we need to do here is to firstly actually establish what the radius um, of the orbit is from the centre of the Earth. So we need to do a calculation of R. R will be equal to the 610 kilometres plus the radius of the Earth, which is 6.4 by 10 to the 6 metres. And then that will be equal to 7.01 by 10 to the 6 metres. Now remembering that kilometres, that's uh, 610,000 metres. So that's what you'd need to substitute into that. So that's the radius that we're going to be using for our calculation. Next thing that we need to do is work out our equation uh, that we'll be using. We know that g is equal to v squared, the velocity of the satellite, over r, which is the radius of orbit, uh, which is also equal to a gravitational constant times by the mass of Earth over R squared. And what we can do is, if we were to simplify this a little bit, if we multiply both sides by R, that will cancel that down. I'm going to ignore that G for now. And one of the R's on the bottom will cancel with that one. So that gives us an equation where we have V squared is equal to GM over R, or V, the velocity, will be equal to the square root of gm over r. Now what we can do is substitute some values in. g is equal to 6.67 by 10 to the negative 11. And the mass of the Earth is 6 by 10 to the 24 kilograms. in my little square root thing over here. And we need to divide that by the radius which we've just calculated. So that one comes down over into there. 7.01 by 10 to the 6 metres. And when you're doing this on the calculator, um, usually good to put a bracket around the whole lot inside the square root, but it's really important to put a bracket down the bottom there because otherwise your calculator might think that you want to go say for on the top line 6 by 10 to the 24 divide by 7.01 and then it'll go equals and then times it by 10 to the 6 so if you put a bracket on the bottom line there it'll ensure that everything that you want divided will be divided so plug that all into the calculator and you'll end up with 7 555.78 which is a little bit more accurate than you need so we will call this 7.6 by 10 to the power of 3 meters per second okay so that's the answer for the first one that's the speed at which you'll be traveling Find the strength of the gravitational field at this altitude is the next part of the question. And the equation that we need to use for this is g is equal to v squared over r. We've just calculated the v squared and it's probably a good idea to use the number that's in your calculator. So that would have been 7555.78 8. So if that was in your calculator, just don't clear it. Um, answer squared divided by the radius, which we calculated above a bit earlier. 
7.01 by 10 to the 6 and that will be equal to 8.14 newtons per kilogram now for calculations like this uh, there may be a little bit of um, a range in which acceptable answers would be given because there's possibilities where your radius calculation and also your velocity calculation have been rounded off to different extents of accuracy so there could be a little bit of variation but you need to try and get it as accurate as you can. Now that strength of the gravitational field that's also equal to the centripetal acceleration at that point in time at that position and for the third third part of this question what is the gravitational force acting on the telescope we could use to work this out f equals g m1 m2 over r squared or we could also use f equals mg and because we've gone to the effort of doing all the calculations above which incorporates some of that first equation we're just going to use the second one so f equals mg which will be the mass of the satellite 1.16 by 10 to the 4 that's what the mass of Hubble telescope is and we'll multiply that by g which we've just calculated we need to use that 8 0.14 and that will equal 9.4 by 10 to the power of 4 newtons that's the answer to that question there let's move on to one more in this question we have a geostationary satellite find the altitude above the surface the geostationary satellite is a satellite which stays above the same place on Earth all the time. So what we need to do with this is get our equation that we're going to use. And we have this one, r cubed over t squared equals g by the mass of Earth over 4 pi squared. And we need to work out the altitude, so we're going to be looking for the radius. So I'm going to rearrange this to get r cubed is equal to g m t squared over 4 pi squared. Or the radius will be equal to the cube root of g m t squared over 4 pi squared. Now, next thing we need to do is to work out the period t is the time it takes for one orbit of Earth and that will be equal to one day simple for a geostationary satellite unfortunately we can't use days in our calculations we need to use seconds 24 hours by 60 minutes by 60 seconds which is equal to That's what we then use in the calculation. So now, for our calculation, R is equal to the cube root of. Now let's plug all these values in. of the earth is 6 by 10 to the 24 times by the period which is 8 6 400 squared all divided by 4 pi squared now we throw that all into a calculator really carefully and as I said with the previous question, you probably want to put all of that into a bracket and then put the bottom into a second bracket when you're doing the calculation, just so that your calculator knows what you want it to do. And that will give us a radius of 422975 or 
0.23 by 10 to the power of 7 meters. Now that's the radius and the question is asking us for the altitude. So for the altitude that's equal to the radius of orbit less the radius of Earth. So that'll be 4.23 by 10 to the 7 take away 6.4 by 10 to the 6 and that will equal 3.6 by 10 to the 7 meters. Let's answer that question. Okay, have fun.